Hello, this video is going to talk about creating a train model from a point cloud. So I'm logged into the connection client and I'm going to go into project wise um, into a testing folder that I've already created. In order to create the files that I need to create this train model, uh, I'm going to open my 990 work set standards and go into the C file um, just so I can be able to launch that create design files application. So inside the seed files folder, um, you'll find all the seed files. I'm just going to open the 2D seed um, just because I need a launching place to start that application from. So as it checks all of my standards as I'm opening it to make sure that everything's up to date. Um, this uh, video is going to be part of a series that creates a complex terrain using uh, conventionally surveyed um, terrain model and OSIP LiDAR uh, to be able to fill out uh, further out um, in case we need some drainage calculations or something like that later along the lines of the project. Um, so this one we're going to focus on just creating the terrain model from the point cloud and once Open Roads Designer opens um, we're going to go ahead and go into that ODOT workflow and select that create design files application to start uh, creating our design files. There's a couple different ways we can do this. Um, I'm going to demonstrate two different methods for creating a terrain model. One is straight from the LAS file, and the other is an uh, intermediate step um, that's going to load the LAS file in to create a point cloud as a pod inside the file, and then we're going to create the terrain model from that pod with the point cloud being attached inside the design file itself. The more efficient method is to use the uh, create straight from the LAS file um, and create our, our terrain model that way. Um, so as we check all of our standards as it's opening, um, let this open a second. And now I'm going to go ahead and select my Ohio DOT workflow from the drop down uh, in the top left, Ohio DOT. And I'm going to do the Create Design Files application in the Files section of that workflow. So using this application, I'm going to be creating a point cloud file, um, or a PC file. Um, so I know that it's a base map, and I happen to know the code, so I'm going to use the filter to create that, uh, to find that file. So I'm going to select my, it's a survey type file. Um, it's going to be created in the survey base maps folder. And I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, 3D seed file since this is going to be a 3D seed um, or a 3D file once it's created. So now that it's checked on, uh, I'm also in uh, an effort of saving some time. I have the settings open last created file checked on in the create design files application. So this will automatically open that file once it's created. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit create files. It's going to go ahead and uh, create that file inside my 300 survey folder um, under the base maps uh, folder under, in, inside that root directory. So now it's going to ask me to check back in my design file. I could have freed it just as well as checking it in since I didn't make any changes to the, uh, the seed file itself. Now this project is dark 185, so it uh, is in the south zone and everything's going to be on um, a state plane grid uh, coordinate system. Uh, so now that I'm done with the Create Design Files application for now, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and work inside my design file. So there's nothing inside my file, and now I'm going to go ahead and move into that survey workflow and go ahead and create my train model from the point cloud. So back in project-wise, I do have my point cloud already saved inside my field data, raw data, um, I just have uh, some OSIP tiles that go outside my, my boundary of my project. Um, so I'm going to be bringing those in, making that complex terrain in the next video. Um, so I have that OSIP LAS in here. Uh, it's already edited um, it's to just have ground only. But as long as the data is classified inside that LAS file, we can create the train model from just a certain classification inside the LAS. So we could still have um, the default level vegetation, things like that, if a macro was run for the classification. So inside my design file, uh, I'm going to go under our terrain tab. And since I'm in the point cloud file, uh, I'm, you're just going to do create from file here. Um, so using the create from file, it's going to allow me to browse inside my project. Um, so I need to go 
into my project. That was the last one that I happened to be working in. So under since I'm in central office, I'm going to go into the D06 underbar um, testing, uh, design training, and in my 300 survey uh, survey data, field data, raw data, I have my OSIP LAS in there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to copy that out to my working directory and allow me to work on that file locally. Um, so it's not that, it's four tiles of OSIP that's been clipped. Um, so it's a pretty good sized file, right around 2 million points. Um, so still very manageable inside the software to be able to use it. So now I have my import terrain models uh, dialog box that shows up. Um, so this is where if my file had uh, multiple classifications, they would all show up here on the left and I could check on the ones that I actually want to triangulate to. Um, so with this one, I only have one classification in there. It's just the ground. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and use all those boxes that are default checked on. Uh, there's not another terrain model in my file, so I don't need to worry about my appending or um, merging inside uh, an existing. Um, and then I'm not going to do any filtering options either to this file. Uh, OSIP is generally pretty sparse as far as the density goes, so it's it's very easy to work with um, right out of the right out of the box. Um, so, but if I had a really dense point cloud, like I, if I scan terrestrially. Um, and try to use a point cloud straight from that. I might use some of the filtering options like a, a tin filtering and use some Z tolerances so I don't have that dense or that much redundancy in my, in my data. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead into the feature definition tab and select my terrain model. Um, this is existing and I'm just gonna put it on a, a triangles. I'm gonna put on triangles too. Um, so this allows me to uh, turn on multiple terrain models on and off by using the level manager. Um, when I start uh, creating that complex terrain in the next video, it's going to make a little bit more sense. So I'm going to import the terrain only since I don't really have anything else in there. I don't have spots or break lines or anything else. Um, and then it is in the same coordinate system that the file is in. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as none, whereas I could select that coordinate system and it could potentially reproject for me if I needed it to. So I'm going to go ahead and click import. And it's going to import that LAS file from my working directory and assign that feature definition and triangulate that model as it's creating in the proper coordinate system and location that it needs to be in. So it should only take a second. Uh, like I said, it's only a couple million points, so it's a pretty uh, manageable size uh, terrain model. And I'm going to do a fit view. Um, it, it's coming in blue because I have it on that uh, the Triangles 2 um, feature definition. And if I kind of zoom in a little bit and, and start panning around, we can see I have a very dense uh, terrain model data set here. Um, that's, uh, that's ground only. So that's a quick way uh, in order to make a terrain model without having to bring that LAS file in and creating that intermediate pod file um, in, in, the, in the intermediate. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make another file um, that we're going to use another method to be able to bring that terrain model in. So I'm going to use that create design files application and I'm just going to go ahead and, and find that PC file. I'm going to create another one and select my 3D seed as well. And I still have that setting um, checked on to be able to open that design file as soon as it's created. Uh, so it's going to prompt me to check my file back in. And this time I definitely want to check it in because I have made some edits to that, that point cloud file. And it's going to uh, push all of my changes from my working directory back into ProjectWise and update it um, so I can use it later. Um, and when I'm creating that complex terrain model. So in this, in this example, I'm going to uh, load that um, terrain model, uh, or create that terrain model a little bit differently, um, and I'm going to be using uh, the uh, point cloud manager to go ahead and bring that point cloud directly in. Um, let's say maybe I want to look at it, make sure everything makes sense. Um, this is a good way to, to be able to do that. So I'm going to go up a level to my 300 survey data, field data, raw data, and open my LAS file. So I will have to change my extension um, because I will need to create a pod. And a pod is a, a Bentley proprietary uh, point cloud format. Um, so it allows 
some easy use of that, that file inside uh, 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 DGN. Um, so I'm going to leave the, the compression at a terrestrial uh, scan data. Um, so there's a couple different options. Um, it basically allows you to change the precision of that file. So if you have um, coordinates that go out into the thousands or so uh, for like a terrestrial scan, um, since you have really dense data, I usually just keep everything in a terrestrial scan when I'm bringing those in. So I'm going to keep the units at survey feet and go ahead and bring that file in. Um, I'm going to use no wizard to create that uh, OSIP pod file that it's going to automatically create. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. So now it's created that OSIP pod file um, and it should be inside my uh, field data raw data and I have that OSIP pod that it has created now. Um, so if I wanted to fit my view, I have that point cloud in here now. Um, so if I wanted to look at it, combine uh, some other point clouds together into one, I could do it all in here. Um, I could look at it, do some uh, classification routines, some, some basic, uh, basic manipulation of the point cloud inside uh, Open Roads Designer. So now if I want to create a terrain model from this pod, um, there's a couple different ways I can do that. Um, I'm going to use the uh, additional methods create from point cloud. So what this does is it's reading my point cloud manager and it's grabbing all my point clouds that are associated inside the manager. Uh, I have the same uh, dialog as I did when I created it from file. So if I wanted to do some filtering by my tin, um, I could do that as well to get rid of some of that redundant data. But I'm just going to go ahead and, and create the triangulation all um, all the way myself uh, with all the tr all the points. Um, so I'm going to put it on triangles three, just so I can have the different that ability to be able to turn these different terrains on and off. Um, and my uh, triangulation methods aren't really going to matter too much since this is a nice rectangular point cloud. Um, I'm not really going to have any of those um, uh, inside corners where I'm, uh, that triangulation might might throw off my my contouring. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and import that file in. And it's going to go ahead and triangulate that using that uh, feature definition of existing triangles 3. And it's, it's going to be the same uh, type of workflow as when we created that, uh, that from file using that point cloud. But the only uh, the difference is that I also have that point cloud inside the file um, as well as that terrain model. Uh, so if I wanted to go in and turn that terrain model off, um, I could go into my file, see my used. And I can turn the train model off, and I have that snappable uh, point cloud in here. So that's one big benefit of bringing a pod in. Um, if I needed to, to snap, create some line work uh, quickly or something like that, I could, I could do that or clip it down. If I wanted to clip it down smaller, I could use the um, point cloud manager tools, and I could clip this down to make it a little bit smaller, more manageable, a little bit easier to use terrain model in the end. So I'm going to be using uh, this data in my next video to create a complex terrain um, using a couple different methods of merging and appending, so look forward to that.